And we're live. Hello, everyone, from wherever you are. Welcome to Whangarei, New Zealand, a beautiful, beautiful city in the North Island, in the upper north in New Zealand. Uh, if you don't know where you where it is, check it out on Google Maps, and obviously you're going to see a lot of beautiful uh, beaches and beautiful, beautiful mountains in New Zealand and Whangarei. Um, today I have with me uh, Vince Cucurello and uh, councillor for the Whangarei, um, for Whangarei uh, the, um, District Council here in New Zealand. And we're going to talk about the future uh, plans for Whangarei under the new pandemic situation we have around the world. And of course, New Zealand is one of the, uh, has uh, fared much better because of our small borders and because of the yacht being in the middle of the ocean. It's easier to manage when you when you're stuck in the middle of the ocean away from everybody else, and you can lock down the borders very quickly. And we've fared really well, and which is great. And um, but we still have much more work to do because it's a lot of events for uh, for tourism, for the future of uh, Fungray's growth. Uh, by, by events, by shows, and so we're going to discuss about that tonight. And um, before we begin, I'd like uh, Vince to just introduce himself and tell us who he is and what he's about and what he does. Welcome. <laughs> oh, there we go. There we go. I'll show you one of my boys. This is, Ginger. This is Harry. He's uh, he's one of our uh, two-year-old boys. And the other mm -hmm. ones that are one year old, his name's Snow. But I'm Vince Cockerell. I'm one of the councillors for Whangarei. My ward, effectively, because Whangarei deals with wards, uh, my ward is Okara. Now, Okara mm -hmm. stems everything from Kensington out towards Onorahi, down, up to, down towards Ramanga and up to Manu. So it's quite a large area, and, and it has approximately 40, I'll probably say 30,000 people in that area. Wow. We've got four councillors who actually represent that area. So roughly, as uh, I said, roughly five to six thousand per councillor, theoretically. Uh, Foray is made up of around about a total of ninety-six thousand people all up. Again, roughly, I will say roughly because that depends on whether you go by statistics, New Zealand, or whether you go by the hospitals, uh, actual people who get admitted to hospital. Their statistics say it's slightly over a hundred. So you know, let's say ninety-six is what we're saying at the moment. Uh, I've been a district councillor for, this is my third term. My first term was uh, from 2007 to 2010. Mm -hmm. And then I had a six-year break and I came back on as another councillor again from basically 2014, uh, no, 16 through to now. So, yeah, so um, I can't really say much apart from I love the area. Whangarei is an amazing area. And I'm sure the amount of time that you have lived here, you can say the same thing as well. If you haven't yeah, been to Whangarei, years, I think. Yeah, if you haven't been to Whangarei, it's, it's probably one of the easiest places to live. Mm. We're about two hours away from Auckland. So don't, you know, don't hate us because we're not in Auckland. But uh, we have a much more relaxing life up here. We've got, yeah. we're about, Whangarei is about half an hour away from any beach, from the, both the west coast and the east coast. We have native forest within 10 minutes walk of the city. Uh, we've got one of the best rugby grounds in, well, New Zealand. It's not fully covered, but it's it's still classified. Their rugby, their rugby New Zealand and rugby the world, and even yeah. FIFA. Loved the way we had our stadium and, and the way it came up. So they, they're all good. We've had, uh, let's see, what else about Whangarei? We've got one of the best deep water seaports. So if you've got any large ships, we've got, they can be taken in our in our waters in Whangarei. What else would you like to know about Whangarei? Because, you know, let's be honest, Whangarei is a beautiful spot. It definitely is. I'm like I'm saying, I've spent like um, on and off about 20 years of my life in Whangarei. I uh, spent 20 years in the 90s, uh, 10 years in the 90s, I think, and then 20 years, the last 10, uh, 10 years more, the last 10 years that I've been here since 2010, and now it's 2020. And you're right, this Whangarei is a beautiful, relaxed, uh, welcoming um, environment compared to most places I've lived, because I've lived quite a few places throughout New Zealand. I lived in South Thailand, lived in uh, Auckland, uh, and, you know, uh, and also Palmer's, uh, New Plymouth. Uh, spent a year there and also in further up north. 
Now, um, well, I remember today that the first time I um, actually spent a bit of time in Whangarei was, I think, when I was about 12 years old. This was in Forum North where we had what what is now Kapahaka. Before yes. then, it wasn't called that. It was like when I was in intermediate, it was my second form two. It was just uh, inter intermediate school championships around Maori culture. And so I spent a, uh, a week uh, as part of our um, class at Forum North live, uh, sleeping, right? Sleeping in the Forum North itself uh, and uh, in the hall there. Uh, and, um, and I think. We were upstairs. I'm not quite sure. Now it's got seats uh, up in the main hall. But we spent a week there uh, carving, uh, learning drama, uh, painting, and all that. Compete, And then at the end of it, we competed against all the other schools, all the other yep. form two. And I remember I was a son out of this and acting as a son, you know, uh, um, doing my little flapping, my little uh, sun rays. It was quite <laughs> funny. But it's, it's interesting. Um, Fungray, um, the Forum North has been like the main focal point of uh, shows, uh, of events, and international events mainly, as well as local events and national events. And they've done, you know, it's, it's like the go-to place for this thing. So uh, for Fungray, and it's, uh, you guys are going to be changing that a bit with the council has been doing a lot of um, um, rebuilt, I guess, uh, with the offices because you, the offices have been at the Forum North for decades, right? Uh, and now there's some, yeah, so now there's like changes to the area. Now, what made this, um, you know, I'm not sure how much you had, in, had to do with it, but what made this change and decide to actually move this, uh, the offices away, away to the RSA area? What was the call behind that? Or well, the reason? It, 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 if we go back, we go back let's say, uh, 25 years, when Fongaray actually came on to, or the council decided to move into Forum North. Now, before that, Forum North was an arts centre, so it was mostly arts around the place. By moving Forum North, by moving the council chambers into Forum North, we managed to have all the staff in one area. So today we've now got just on, let's say, 400 staff. So it's just under 400 staff. Hmm. And we're split up inside three different buildings. So the argument was put to us by the by the staff saying, look, if you want us to be more efficient, it's probably better for in one building. Now, that, from a logic point of view, that, that does make sense. You know, if, if everyone's in the same building working around, it, it's, it's going to be more efficient. What people have forgotten with today is we have technology. So people can work at home now, whereas previously they couldn't. Mm. So the question is, do we need a building which is 7,000 square metres or 5,000 square metres or even 2,000 square metres? The key thing is having a building which is purpose-built, which is what this will be, uh, and it will be, I won't say it will be the top standard, but it will be fairly close, you know, it's got going to have some green standards in there to make it any energy efficient and that sort of side things. I, again, can't talk about the building because I don't know much more about the actual construction of it. But what I can tell you is that's the main reason for why moving the staff away. Then that brings Forum North back to that art centre again. Right. And there are groups who are actually wanting to take over Forum North and put the theatre, put a put a new theatre there. Now they're thinking about a an eight hundred to a thousand seat, seat, seat sorry seat theatre. Yep. So. Yep. We've already got a 300 seat set theatre. We've got a 450 auditorium, but they actually want to put a thousand seat. And that's mainly for the ballet and for other events that we have here in Fongaray, which now, because of us not having those facilities, they're now going to places like Kerry Kerry or you know, further Auckland, and they're not actually coming to Fongaray. Because most of the entertainers are wanting places where they can hit at least 800 people because it's more efficient for them. Right. But yeah. so, uh, so the build, so with Forum North itself, because you've got the, um, let's say you've got the offices upstairs, and then Great. you've got the other area where you've got like the district council, which sits sits right at the front there. Uh, uh, what's going to happen with that? Is that going to be flattened out to allow for the theatre to be built in that area, or that's that's one of the theories with it? Look, there is a section of the council or the Forum North 
Now, this is not the auditorium or the theatre. This is actually the what they call used to call the engineering block. This part here needs to be pulled down and replaced. So, in putting the new theatre up, this is part of it, which is going to be have to replace. Now that that you know, when it start banding around figures, it might be looking around forty to fifty thousand. Sorry, forty to fifty million to put a new theatre up. So it's there's there's a lot of money involved in this. Hmm. Um, and as I said, by moving the council to one building, keeps everyone. So if, yeah, if you've got a complaint, you can have the building services guy come down and deal with the complaint. You got someone without yeah, the resource consent, he can come down. Someone's trying to um, having a dog problem, well, they can come down and deal with that at the issue as well for the front counter. So it's it's a lot easier than having to wait half an hour for the staff to come from another side of town across to Forum North. Right. So with the Forum North itself, with the new build, um, because I mean, like, like I mean, it's, like I said, it was a hub of all these shows and stuff. Do you, um, because it's going to, we're looking at a bigger theatre and stuff. Do you see more and larger international pe um, shows coming in? Like, say, I'm a fan of heavy metal, right? So I'm into yep. Iron Maiden, into Tool, into Pearl Jam. Like, not yep. even just the heavy metal. I'm into rap and stuff. So. If you've got a thousand uh, seat or so much event thing, that is going to allow these people that actually go up to, say, Auckland or Wellington or Christchurch because they have bigger arenas and uh, be able to come to Fungarain now. Has, it, has the word been spread out saying that we're going to have a bigger theatre so in the future? So please be aware that, you know, is, it, is, is, the, say the, is the PR machine working and out there spreading out the word, you know? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. The PR machine is definitely working. Our events team look; they're they're an amazing group of people. You know, there's, I'd say there'd probably be four or five, maybe up to six or seven dedicated staff just for trying to get events to, to Fongaroo. Most of the time, they they use Toll Stadium, or sorry, I should rephrase that, Semenoff Stadium, uh, which is which is down there in Okara Park, which which is able to handle you know twenty thousand people. But when you're looking at smaller concerts, and you know, most heavy metal bands prefer to be outside, though I have to say. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So toll would work better for that, and and like I mean, that's all part of this is a council, isn't it? Running toll. Now, um, tolls had a change in um, in name and stuff like that. So is the council um, um, has shares in that, or you know, how does it go to have um, bring events to toll? Yeah, so, so the stadium is actually owned by council, but it's managed by a trust. So right. the, the the events that happen are just like the trust. So, so it means that council doesn't get involved in the uh, maintenance of the stadium. They don't do, get all that, that. That's all done by the trust. What the council right. does is they have, a, they have a dedicated uh, events team, and they are looking forward to having events which are um, – which are going to bring in people to Fongaroo and and the things such as the Fritter Festival. You know that was one of the events that came up. Then we since that we've had six sixty a couple of times. We've had Fat Freddy's drop. We've had you know different other events happening at, at the stadium, and every time you know we've filled it. It's mm. it's been a great event. It's been a great day. People or evening. So, you know, I, I haven't come across anyone who hasn't really enjoyed any of those events. And the funny thing is, every time we have an event there, just like 660, we right. had people travelling up from uh, New Plymouth to go to the Whangarei event because they could get a, get, a, get a seat here, whereas they couldn't get one in Auckland. Right. <laughs> so my next question is, so you got all these people outside of Whangarei coming up. Then... Uh, because the bars are closed early and stuff like that, they don't <laughs> stay, right? Yeah, I've, had a, look, I've had like a two-hour discussion one night, uh, you know, on the on the street saying, where's everybody? It's 10 o'clock. Where's everybody? You know, because I'm used to the 90s when I used to go out uh, on a pub crawl as yeah. a, uh, you know, as a 20-year-old. And going, this is a cool happening event. And now, like, you've got all these um, saying, okay, all these events are coming up. And then all those guys get back in their car and go home, right? They drive back to Auckland because there's nothing, no nightlife in Whangarei. How is the, 
you know, how has that affected the overall business uh, side of the nightlife, which is vibrant in Auckland and everywhere else, but not Whangarei? You know, because so, that, that affects a lot of people. Yeah. So, so, so what? Well, let's let's go back a few years. The reason why Whangarei brought in the one they call it the one one way door policy. Mm. So basically, they said, well, after one o'clock, you know, if you want to come in, you you you're either in. If you go out, that's it. You've you've got to go home. Mm. The reason they brought that in is because we had a lot of trouble around Whangarei. We had uh, we had young kids standing outside the place and getting ready for drunk people to come out, and they were beating them up. Right. So there was an issue. That that issue has now been dealt with. You know, and, and no offense to the police, but it's it's actually really good to see more police coming to Northland to take care of that issue as well. You know, we've got right. a lot of yeah, just like every area, there are good and bad parts, but one of the ways that council dealt with it was they turned around and said, Well, let's put this one way door policy in. They put a lot of other procedures, other things in place as well, and it actually has tidied up the area. Now, mm. on your aspect to say, when people come up from a concert, they want to then go out on the town. They can still do that. So right. there's the, the way the policy is actually written is it's written so that um, if an event is happening, the bars can actually work together and mm. actually say, okay, we're going to have a special event. The special event is because of this concert which is on and we're right. going to have a license to stay open for this length of time so they apply for a special license for that event all the bars are working together therefore more people come in. the biggest problem is a lot of people don't work they don't work together or they don't work fast enough because they right. they work they're working on their business or so they're working in their business and then when it comes to the event they go oh the event's on but by then it's too late to run to, to apply for licenses and things like that so it, you can apply for at least six months in advance to make sure you can get it all through so it, it is available the, the procedures are the policies are there to make it happen but people have got to plan ahead right. and, and I, I've noticed it myself with people saying oh it's a, I didn't, didn't know what's happening until it's happened and it's like yeah, we do all the advertising. We've done all. We've shown. We've been, been out there talking to everybody, advertising, and it's like sometimes I think it's just people get caught up in in their own business every day, every day, trying to struggle to earn a living. And so, um, you know, seeing all this come out happen, and that suddenly it's happened, and they think, "Oh, we missed out." Now, we're talking about this sort of uh, about events coming up. Now, we we're talking off, offline about the women's rugby um, World Cup supposed to happen in february but and it's supposed to you know be a toll as well as part of the one of the games i guess one or two of the games now that's because of what's happened with the bear bug it's kind of um all these events are kind of like stalled on how uh, things happen how you can manage things because you don't you're not aware how the government's going to pull another hey we're going to go to level three now and you know we're all relying on on the head honcho telling everybody else how to run you know events and so with uh with putting built moving forward uh building these like say th uh, was it like thousand um thousand person theater that you know that's gonna looking to happen at um forum north uh replacing the buildings there and i think of course i mean forum north's been that way for so long and of course you know we all want more changes we want to be more modernized and i think it's a good thing um, for Forum not to do that because I think there's a lot of areas to do that. But the other side is the rate payers with the, with the small businesses, right? So you got like a lot of empty stores in town, which uh, a lot of times when I talk to people, they talk to me, um, you know, because I, I, I do a lot of runs. every Almost every week I walk around and look and count the, how many empty stores there are. I think at the last count there was like 19 empty buildings for a city center to have 19 em empty buildings in a place like from ray with 90,000 people that's not a good look for tourists right for especially when you put all these events on and you don't uh, you got all these empty stores what is council doing to facilitate to allow small businesses if you're aware of to help small businesses grow 
And to be able to actually get into these places without um, having so many high uh, costs involved, especially right now with, with COVID and the cost of actually trying to survive when you can't, you don't know if we're going to go into lockdown or not. And you're not going to be, able, you know, you got to you got to sign off. I mean, personally, I don't like to sign my name off at any form. And that's just me. I just, I let my, I let my partner go in and do that. You know, I let my business partner go and sign me in. I don't sign because I, I don't want to everybody to know where I am at every single freaking moment I go shopping, <laughs> right? And it, it's like, that's putting me off by spending money. I'll just walk out and go somewhere else and spend money. And I know there are people like me as well in hundreds of thousands, right? Because everybody has a similar mentality to everybody else. And there'll be people that don't even care, right? And that's fine as well. They don't even care to sign the name away and all that. But how that's affecting a lot of businesses, getting customers. And, um, you know, especially like say the theater, uh, sorry, the movie theater, right? They just, uh, the Cinema City spent so much money to make these beautiful, beautiful seating, uh, comfort, lots of room, and suddenly lockdown, right? And all that money they were hoping to make, now their employees are not able to get paid. Uh, they have to go into some sort of uh, wage reduction or whatever it is, facilitation, and the manager's got to look at his books. And for three months or whatever it was, no customers. And that's and a lot of um, shops had to go under because of that. And they're saying there's about 20% more in this time going to be the same. So how is that going to work for Fung Ray if, if the rates are going to be so high that the businesses look at it and go, I don't even think I'm going to want to get a brick and mortar place because of this. What is the, you know, what is the council thinking at this time about these things? Yeah, look, look yeah, at that. Look at that. Oh, bit of echo there. Um, the big thing with with council in relation to going forward, look, we've it's one of the big things from from a car ward person who actually deals with the city centre. It's what I see a lot of me. A lot of my businesses and my clients own businesses within the city, and they are their biggest thing for them is parking. I know that sounds so boring and stuff like that, but to have a business survive like if you go down to um st luke's or another shopping mall around auckland generally they have 16 car parks to one shop right so if you have if you if you go to a shopping mall you know and there's might be um you know 15 20 shops in there there'll be at least a good thousand car parks right whereas in Fongaray, because of the way Fongaray has grown the cars have slowly been forgotten about. Yeah. So we used to have parking down all the streets. And as the streets got busier, the car parking got taken away. So within Whangarei, as an older city, you've got a lot of shops which need car parking and there is none. Right. Now, on saying that, people, you know, I've had people say to me, oh, they'll catch the bus, they'll do this. Most people that I deal with in Whangarei don't catch the bus. Hmm. And I think it's a huge range from youngs to elderly, and, and most people will actually prefer to hop in their car, drive, and then, then you go, oh, well, they can they can park in a, in a car park, you know, a couple of k's away and walk in. Again, you try telling a young mother, you know, yet she's got to – Park her car two k's away, then get the kids out, take the push chair down the road or whatever, you know, walk into town, grab their stuff, and then go back. They're not going to do it. No. That's why places like Okara Shopping Centre have sprung up. Uh, Tardi was Mega Centre have, have popped up. Places have popped up because they've got the car parking for their clients, mm. and those are the places which are, so, are going great in Fongarei because that's what's happening now. How does council going to change that? Well, council's got on the books to have more car parking, actually build a car parking building in the city, but that's coming up in the long-term plan. Mm. So the long-term plan is something that councils do every three years for the next right. 10 years, and your rates are determined by what's in that long-term plan. Mm. So not only are you paying for maintenance happening, but you're also paying for the development of going forward. So yeah, we need, you know, and I've, I've argued this with the staff many times, 
you know, we've got a, around about 500 public car parks. And I'm saying, look, for Fongaray's city, we need to have 4,000 car parks. Hmm. You know, if we just go by the 16 to 1 ratio, that's there's about 200 shops there, so we should have about 4,000 car parks, roughly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, it's trying to get them to understand that the way shopping has happened or the shopping happens nowadays um, with, you know, everyone also argues, oh, but everyone's shopping online. People do shop online, but most people in Whangarei and Northland would prefer to go to a shop and be served by someone yeah. and 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 have that inter interaction, face-to-face -face communication. Yeah. And it happened and it proved COVID. How many people struggled with COVID because of the fact that they couldn't get out? They were trapped right. in the home. Yeah. As social beings, we love to communicate with people. And one of the things I noticed as soon as we went down to level two, uh, from level four to level two in Fongaray, everyone went out. The restaurants were packed, busy, um, everyone out. Because everyone wanted – the one thing about Whangarei and Northland is we support each other. Right. So, so a lot of the businesses were going, okay, look, I'm, I'm going to support you because you're a local business. And that business is going, I'm going to support you because you're a local business. So there was a lot of that. Now, that doesn't happen in Auckland. No. But it does happen here in Whangarei. And, and that's the amazing thing about it. It's, it's – it's it's a very much of a community atmosphere, and yeah, I, I really take my hat off to a lot of those businesses. Now, when the prime minister jumped it back up to level two again, from level one, it just put a hold on many events. So there was a lot of events planned, and people were going out, and then as soon as level two was announced, they were all going, oh, hmm. and they they went into a shock mode. Yeah. So now coming back down to level one, people are now a little bit more hesitant about going out. So you're saying about people signing in. Look, it, it's okay if people sign in, if they don't want to sign in, but it's, it's they've got it. The businesses are required by the government to have those yeah. sign-in rates. They have to do it. Mm. So whether you sign in or not, that's up to you. But, right. you know, <laughs> if something yeah. happens, it hasn't happened, but if it did, then that's where you need to be contacted. Exactly. So, so Fongaray growing going forward. Look, I would love to see, as I said to you, 4,000 car parks for our city. We've got a, a car park down at the town, the, the waterfront area, which is which holds about 100, well, 180 car parks, and that's been turned into a nice green spot. Now, that's great. Green spot is awesome. It's, it's what people love to relax in. Laurie Hall Car Park, another green spot. But the problem is, if you start taking away car parks, you've got to put them back somewhere. And that's the one thing that as an urban councillor, I'm still trying to fight for because I'm I'm dealing with a lot of people in council who who feel, oh yeah, as I said, they feel buses are people can catch a bus. Yeah, well, I know that most people aren't gonna catch buses. And I know that most businesses, they need people to keep their business alive. So it's I, um yeah. With the, uh, I mean, with the uh, with the car parks and stuff, I've totally, I'm totally with you on that because look, I've got elderly pa parents who come up from Northland, right? They don't want to be parking it a k away to walk to the freaking shops because they'll just go, you know what? I will go yeah. shop somewhere else. I'll go shop to Auckland where I can find parks. And the it's thing about Fungaree is we don't have a mega mall where there's parking underneath, where there's levels and levels of parking, and that's, I mean, that's something that would work for Fungaree where you could have that because that means that you could have a, a you know a central designated parking area where you could just go in park your cars i mean like um like the cinema right cinema city that works really well if that was all over the place as well central because we know we're going to get parking in the middle of the night if we go and see a late show at eight o'clock at night we'll have parking at cinema city because not um not everybody will be out but there'll be enough levels of parking that we can park there but in the daytime, you know, like a Saturday, you can't, you know, like um, all the streets are full of car parks. So you're looking at driving around, looking around and the stress, you know, of uh, and there was a stress element as well of trying to get a park, car park, which may, by the time you get the car park, you're already pissed off. Right. 
and then you and then you go by the time you go to the shops you're pissed off already and you're like i don't even want to be here now you know you just want to go and eat and get lost and get go away and i think that's a lot of um the the downsides of not having car parks i think in from uh like i said it's detrimental to, to the um, to the businesses and if you can't have people uh, you know, if you can't have car parks, you don't have people, and then you can't have sales. And at the end of the day, it's a wage earner who loses out because of it. Now, uh, I've heard that there's going to be parking, um, more parks put up at the end of John Street, I think it is, uh, by um, the waterfront there. That's now, right. is, that part, is that part of the three-year, um, you're talking about turning a plan? How many of those buildings is going to be torn down for that to be allowing for more parking? Because the hundred fires is there, so you're you're thinking about. I mean, the council's probably thinking about having a whole lot of parking available for tourists at Hunter Vaza. Otherwise, you're going to have the same problem as the locals have with parking. If you're going to have tourists coming up from Auckland, hiring a yeah. car, getting off the planes, hiring a car, and then trying to find a car park, and then they're going like, I can't be bothered either because there's no car park, right? So. Yeah, I Fortunately, you've you've hit you've hit something really big on the head here. No, no buildings are going to be ripped down for more parks. Um, if if you go down to where the Huntervasa is being laid out at the present moment, the big white shield around it, there's a car parking area right next door to it. That will all turn into a green space. There's, there's, it's going to be a very pretty green space too, by the way. Car parking is still going to be an issue, and I know that sounds like a uh, a first world problem and i understand that but it's it's one of those things if you want people visiting places you do need car parks so i, I hear you 100 percent on that and i i know full well that council hasn't dealt with the car parking issue at this present moment all right so while we're on the hundred visor topic let's talk about this um this building right yes. um there's been a struggle for years to get something to do with Handavaza and Whangarei. I know when the first, uh, when it was, the whole idea of it offered, was offered to Whangarei back about 20 odd years, Whangarei didn't want it, right? Whangarei sure. was not interested, uh, didn't want to have anything to do with it. And uh, so it went up to Kao Kao. It got put, Kao Kao toilets, uh, Handavaza toilets got put on the map for the worldwide to come to um, Northland to see this artwork of, you know, for a well-known artist, overseas artist, yep. uh, who made his uh, home in, in Northland. So 20 years later or so, Fungri, you know, decides, well, you know, we lost out, let's let's do something. So the di discussion I've had locally with people about this is why are we, why did the council decide to put so much money? And I know we talked about it's only 25 million that's locally you know from taxpayers and rate payers uh local people uh people's you know taxes and stuff and rates but um why would the council decide to spend uh, you know to go after money to build something when there's already something in front of northland with it but also that's not new zealand right so uh, so building something for an overseas artist that has nothing to do with new zealand uh, he's, um, of course, he made his home in New Zealand, died in New Zealand, in the Northland area there, and you know, great artist, nothing to against them. But why would the council go and put this huge building up to uh, for someone who's not actually a New Zealand artist? Yeah, yeah. look, that's something I something I can't really can't answer. really answer because it's it, this this whole concept about. Um, Frederick Kuntervasa and where he's come from and things like that. There's there's so much speculation out there. Um, he has his whole philosophy about buildings and things was turning old buildings or turning commercial buildings into a livable environment and and doing radical changes to them, which is what he's known for. So the mayor at the time, or should I say, the people at the time weren't that interested in it. That doesn't mean that they didn't want it. It was just it wasn't high on their priority list. Hmm. When the uh, mayor at the time, or say Mr. Semenov came back into, into being the mayor again, he he had a vision that continue on with that because he actually, you know, he was a, a follower of, of Frederick Kornvass's and there was quite a few other people who were fans of them and they, they pushed to get it through and, and get people involved in it. 
the community, there is a specific group in the community who are very much um, followers of Frederick Kuntavasa and his designs and his and the way he's influenced people. So just to, to turn around and say, hey, it's not my style, that's true. It may not be your style, but it's it's okay because there's a lot of other people who are there as well and who love the project. As I said to you before, around about 2.5 up to about 3 million was spent by local ratepayers. The rest of it was actually spent, or, or quite a fair chunk of it was actually donated, but the central government also came on board and actually put a lot more towards it as well. And I mean, quite a bit of money. So we could quite easily say taxpayers' money. Yeah. Um, oh, look, I, I just can say it's the whole point of it was to create an attraction for Fongarate. Right. Even despite what people say, Fongarei did have the art museum. We did have the rock museum. We did have the fish museum. We did have the Kiwi North. We did have the rails. You know, we we do have several other places around. And and Fongarei itself is is in the middle of a beautiful valley, which has got beaches half an hour from each other. Right. But they felt that the, the people at the time felt that having an actual big tourist attraction like Frederick Kuntavasa could actually bring more people into Whangarei. And when they started going through the process of trying to work out well, how much will it actually bring in, it started going and saying, oh, look, this tourist operator who's running the shipping line, we would actually bring our cruise ships in. Oh, okay. Right. So there was a little bit more incentive to do it. And then because Whangarei was doing Frederick Kundavas in this building, they didn't want to turn around and say, well, you come to Whangarei, that's where you go. No, you come to Whangarei, then you go to Kawaka. Then right. you go to the area, and, and, and you, it comes as part of the tour group. So you're actually going and seeing several of his designs as you go, as you go through. Actually, how many tourists will come and visit? I can't tell you that. That's a pure guesswork. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You never know. You, you never know. know. You on, yeah, you put on an event, you put on a building, you never know who's going to come, and you're just hopeful. You know, it's like how, how long is a piece of string? Yep. And um, so saying that, right, um, what is it going – what is the fulfillment of this – you know, what is, it, um, what is it trying to achieve, right? What is the building trying to achieve apart from the tourist – uh, tr uh, art travel thing, and tr trying to bring in those who are into the art thing. Is it is it going to be something that's going to have? Uh, because I mean, there's a lot of discussion of what it's going to do and what isn't going to do. Is there going to be something to do with Fungray in it apart from having this uh, Frederick's work in there and his building, a building that looks like his, you know, work? So, what is it's going to fulfill as part of Northland? You know. Yeah. So it's it's going to also have it. So. It's one of the great things about this this one building, now, I, I, yeah, I, originally I'm not a fan of, of of the building. Look, to me, it's not my style. Yeah. But okay, you know, I'm 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 quite conservative when it comes to my art. You know, I'm not. <laughs> it's okay. <Yeah. laughs> but it's uh, you know, I can see from that what they are going to do inside the building is there's going to be a whole Maori art museum in in there as well. Uh, and a lot of Māori art involved. There's going to be there's a cafe planned to be in there. There's you know there's there's a lot of other things, and that's going to be right next to the actual um, the Whangarei Art Museum. Right. So that's part of it. And then a uh, bit further down the road, you've got the Hihiawa Peninsula, which is actually going to have the Māori Cultural Centre. Yeah. So there's, there's there's several things just in the in in that area where people can actually walk between them. We also have um, as an art museum. Was well, not really an art museum, but it's an art uh, centre. Is actually Rayburn House. Now this is a yeah. tiny little house which has been put right at the waterfront, which has some amazing exhibitions there, hmm. and they're small exhibitions. You know, you can only fit twenty five people in the room at once, but it, it it's it, they have some really good artwork. So yeah. far as itself, when you put start piecing all of these things together, you start realizing, oh well, we've actually got a really good art collection of different groups of people and there's several different exhibition places so it's it provides that for more artists to come 
So it's not just all about Frederick Kuntervasa, it's about the whole connection between all the other events and all the other art locations. Because I understand you're also going to be holding an event at the Quarry Arts Centre. Yeah, so here's, here's what I'm thinking. Like, okay, so you've got all these different buildings laid out all over the place. So say you're a, I'm a tourist and I've come up for uh, Hundervasa, right? Yep. And there's so many buildings around and stuff. How do I connect? with all that how do i uh you know so what i'm thinking is is like is the is the um, is the council looking at doing a package uh yes. of promotional things where there is something they go well now you're here yep here's to tell you pinpoint everything that's around but not only that um what i'm thinking is with the tiny fast stamps that led everybody around town that you could go to the toll stadium right yep why can't we, we, maybe we should look, <laughs> yeah, maybe we should have a you know a kiwi um stamp on the you know painted on the ground that leads you to all the different artist areas so you could have like kiwi um you know steps leading you all to quarry art center uh to the yep. uh, quarry gardens uh then you could also go to raven house and uh to yep. Hihihawa and the museum so you could do the same thing with that because that then says that okay now, when you come here, there's a red kiwi on the ground or yellow kiwi on the ground that leads to these things because yeah, the tiny part works. You're, right. you're absolutely right. right, and that's actually all part of the process. That's all part of the the advertising scheme. So it's called wayfinding, and so right. that wayfinding is all part of that process. So it's actually going to have paths going to different places, and then you if you start involving the information centre. So at the moment, our information centre is right is right down near the waterfront now. If we bring that back to where it's at the entrance of the city, then people can actually come, they, they'll, they can pop into there, they can actually pick up their little map, or they can pick up the map from one of these other locations, like it does, like they do in other places in the world. Like right. when you go to when you go to Movie World in the, in, in the States, they turn around and go, oh, here's here's uh, Lego World and here's Sea World and all these, and you can now visit these places. Well, we we can do the same thing here. Now, sure, they're not adventure parks, but we do have an adventure park in Fomaray, by the way, uh, heading out towards Para Bay. But beside the point, uh, right. if you just talk about art type of stuff, we're able to show them, okay, you can go to this place, this place, this place. And just like when you go to the Yarra Valley in, in um, uh, up in Melbourne area, you, you start doing wine tours because everyone's got all these different wine wineries around. Well, the same thing here happens in Fomaray. It's going to be yeah, in okay. different places. So, um, and, so same thing with the with the you're talking about the Yarra Valley. Well, Arrowtown, right? Uh, it's and you've got the whole reign of um, and I love that area. I've only been there once, but then you get the wine trail, and yes. uh, it's just the best. So the other thing, talking about this, uh, talking about the art walk, Afi World, right? Afi World is uh, I've forgotten. I think it's. I forgot my friend's name there, but they deal with 3D, um, an app that you can like put up to something and um, it'll show you, you know, it'll pop out and say, this is where you are and give you the idea of that thing. So maybe um, there's something for Afi World to uh, connect with the council to work at doing this. You know, this is like, um, uh, the yeah, the council working with artists, local artists, uh, really? To uh, to help them create new works that will help tourists, uh, because I'm all I'm all about developing um, local artists and upcoming artists, right? So maybe the council could look at uh, what is available in Fungare technology wise, because we're very becoming very techno technologically centered, right? Because of COVID. Because of what's happened, we've learned that technology is our best friend right now. Because uh, yeah, let's say we went to level four tomorrow. Technology is going to be what's going to put us ahead uh, on yep. the forefront, and it's already you know it's already put me on the forefront by having being able to talk to you and people like you by just from the center of my, in the middle of my you know, apartment. Yep. So, the um so I think there is so much happening technology wise in Fung Array with uh, I think it's uh, Creative Tech. Northland, and maybe you know uh, the council could look at working with those guys to create. Um, create pathways, uh, artistic pathways, right, for for tourists 
who get, you know, like uh, if I go to town, I'm lost to seeing which street am I on. And you could just put up your cell phone, right? You could just put up your cell phone to, to on the ground. There's an image on the ground and go, oh, I'm here. All right. So where do and, I want to go? And, and that's stuff which is absolutely now you pitch that idea to Creative Northland. I'm quite mm -hmm. sure they will pitch that idea back to the council and it will, it will be one of those things that will happen. You know, I, I don't know, we, did you see some of the murals that were put around, and this was just done last yeah. year before, yeah. before COVID. Exactly. That was amazing. Those artists, that what they did, and they brought yeah. an international yeah. artist to do this type of work, and mm. they did an amazing job. And it, and the artwork itself was absolutely amazing. Yeah. And, and you had this little map, and you'd go around trying finding all these locations. That's the sort of thing that I'd love to see. And you start involving technology. Mate, that's brilliant. <laughs> The yeah. big thing yeah. I realize, though, is not everyone is a technology is guru like us. <laughs> yeah, I may fix them and play with them, things like that. You may design that sort of stuff, but not everyone's like that. And we've also got to have the other things for our older generation so that they feel comfortable and they can they can mix with it as well. Now, I do have a lot of elderly clients who are very techno savvy, but not everybody is. Right. Right. I mean, I've got, I've got an old, um, my, my dad's 80 years old and he's more, probably more techno, uh, technology savvy than I am because he grew up with uh, Vic 20s back in 80s, right? Yeah, and so now he, he's stuck in there for the last, uh, I don't know, what is it, like 30 odd years of it, uh, 40 years of it. And, but like, like I said, there's not everybody's in there. So my other side would be like, okay, so the t tiny file prints work. So that yes. we could do something like that with the, for the elderly. On the ground for the arts, for the, for the kids. and then you could do, do that for the next gener this generation that's coming up. They're going to be they're more technology savvy than I I am, and so that be more that's something that we could build for them going forward, because I think the whole um the whole idea of trying to create a um, a technical hub in Whangarei is what excites me uh, with with arts and stuff because I think we could do with a um, you know a gaming school we could do with a uh, graphic arts school that where you could basically go in and learn how to create you know uh, what we'll, we'll, um, what is it uh, something like uh, The Witcher you know something huge that comes out of Whangarei we creating a a, um, a gaming hub. And so you could basically go in and learn how to create these things. And I think there's enough brains in Fungray technologically wise to create all that. And I think if the council, uh, you know, if the council could put up a school, we'd be able to get, I'm like, the reason I say this, right? In 2018, yeah. I had a discussion with a world class uh, Warner Brothers animator for about an hour. Cool. Right? And I and we we're discussing about and I said to him, you know, he was talking about putting a school together in from um, in New Zealand, an animation school. And I said, well, the, you could do it in Whangarei. You know, you 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 you, you as an American creator, and uh, could sell you a million dollar house in America and now be a million or like nine hundred thousand or five hundred thousand dollar house in California, and now you'd be a millionaire in Whangarei and you could live off that for 10 years and still be able to teach your animation skills to a whole lot of Fungray students up and coming or interested, you know? And, and then he was also talking about, you know, that sort of aspect, but he's also talking about writing, comic creating and all that. And I said, well, we can do that. And there's availability, but then, and then out the other side of it was like, why get international people do that when we can do it ourselves, right? <laughs> <laughs> Why do we give it to somebody else when we can actually help our own creators and artists build their own uh, schools and uh, organize skills for the future generation? Because now you have a – like um, the reason I say that is because in, I think it's Dunedin or Christchurch has been given tons of money to, to put together a gaming hub. Yep, right. And so I'm like, well, why can't we have that in front of Ray? Because yes. we have the money. I'm sure we have the money. If we can put, if we can garner 40, $37 million for a building, right, mm. we can obviously get a couple million bucks to put together a, uh, a, uh, a school for uh, 
you know, for gaming in Whangarei and get teachers. And of course we can, because like, you know, we were saying offline that we can do these things, uh, get international speakers via, via live stream now. And, you know, sure. I've tried it with Plunge. Uh, it's worked, you know, uh, paid them, you know, and said, hey, come on for an hour, half an hour and do your thing. And, you know, and going forward, there'll be more of that. But I think um, that the knowledge that there is, I mean, the knowledge about funding, let's move on. Yeah, let me, let's segue to funding. So the knowledge about funding that's available to artists isn't out there enough that, uh, so it's not, that knowledge isn't reaching to cre uh, creators. And so they're losing out on what's available to them. Uh, so like, let's, let's, um, how much do you know about creative, co creative communities? Oh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a great man on that sort of side of things, but I, I've, I've dabbled with it a little bit. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about creative communities and how that all works. Right. So let's say, um, would creative communities, uh, the aim of that is for, uh, is to create, um, community, uh, interest and, uh, involvement if I remember right, in the arts. Yep. So with that, say um, how hard is to apply for that and how, how is, is, is it uh, easily is it available to, to creative people? Because I know funding is the hardest thing when you're trying to do anything because you don't, you have a great idea, you know, and um, you have, uh, and then you got to find the great people to get around you to work that idea. And then now you need funding to make it happen. How hard is it to, you know, to get funding from the council to make things happen? It's not that hard. I, I know people go, oh, but all this paperwork we've got to do. Look, the paperwork's all part of the process. Um, Creative Northland will help you with a lot of that sort of stuff. They will help you get through it. But, you know, we've, I'm just thinking of, of one event which I've, personally been involved with which is the the northern fashion awards now we've been running that for the last ooh, eight nine ten years and actually longer 12 years and that has that was more about fashion and getting fashion and, and being fashion how how fashion is important to be do, what a part of the creative sector yeah it's not it's not art as such but it's it's partly as art and filling in those forms it, yes it is hard work but the staff, uh, our creative community staff, staff person, is really keen in trying to help people to actually do that. So communicating with them, helping them fill in the forms, that's what she does. And not only that, Creative Northland also helps you out with that. And they'll also try and find extra funding for you. So if you've got an idea and you, and you want to create something. Now, I, I also know talking to our local uh, ministers, Shane uh, Shane Jones and Winston Peters, they are very, very keen in getting money into the local area. So if you've got a local project and you want to kick it off the ground and you want to have a, a creative school or you want to have an animation school or you want to do something like that, these people are there to try and help you and actually to try and, and encourage you to get that doing. So they'll put the funding and get the funding there for you to do it. So that's you start involving Creative Northland, you start involving uh, creative communities, and then you involve Northland Inc., which is your about the 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 connection between that and the provincial growth fund. And it, all of a sudden, you start having all of this money available to you, but you've had all these other people helping you along the way, and they'll help you to get what you need to get it because they their goal is to get Northland growing. Right. So, if it means helping you to get off the ground to do this, they'll do it. Do you, you've you've had a bit of work with Creative Northland? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I've had a few, um, few, and I and I understand that. But I'm trying to, um, you know, for someone who hasn't, right, yeah. and who who's looking to, and I'm thinking how, because I hate paperwork, yeah. uh, and um. And I, I've got to, I mean, like, I, I've got to, I've got to write a, um, a report about what happened with Plunge, you know, how many people came, how good it was, where did yep. the funding money go? And I'm yep. like, I need someone to do my paperwork because I don't, <laughs> I just can't go and do it. So I'm going to, you know, maybe I should apply for someone who just does my admin. 
Right. You're creative, okay, and creative people aren't always writers. Some of them are, yeah. but some aren't, and it's okay. But this is why we have people like Creative Northland there to, to, to hold our hand and to kick yeah. us up the ass when we need to get the stuff done. You know, that's <laughs> um, – I, look, I've, I've applied for a lot of funding from, from creative communities and places like that, and, yes, writing is not my forte. Yeah. I'm happy to stand out the front and, and welcome people in and, and get people motivated. And, absolutely. But writing, uh, I'd prefer to leave that to someone else. But these people are there and they will try and pair you up to with someone who can write. Yeah. And, and, that's, and that's the bit I like about it, is they will work with you and they'll take, okay, your skill base may not be writing, but your skill base might be uh, financial control. And yeah. so they're yeah. happy to give you all the financial control and they'll get someone else to do the writing for you. So it's, it's yeah, they will work with you. They will help you out. Yeah, I think, I mean, I had Olivia on um, the other week. Uh, was it, man, uh, weeks go so fast for me. It's like the other month. And, you know, she's a new, uh, I think, new creative officer for Creative Northland. And I think um, a lot of time the um, – like we were talking about before, the reports and the um, like writing up the um, paperwork, you know, to apply for these grants. I know there's a lot of grants available. I know there's a lot of funding available, even from Creative um, Creative New Zealand, because I was talking with Alan Zier and um, the other um, last week and the week before he had talked to, he had had uh, he did a hui with um, online hui due to level two with uh, Creative New Zealand. Uh, I think it was Sarah from Creative New Zealand talking about. Um, you know, uh, talking about uh, visual arts and getting funding for visual arts and stuff that's available. And, you know, like the whole thing is I don't like to see uh, hungry or uh, well, starving artists. The whole idea of starving artists really pisses me off. I think that's the worst thing. And what, what it is is that a lot of artists don't, uh, don't do business, right? They don't go and learn business. By not well, learning business... Yeah, exactly. They're creative people, and but because they don't learn business, they um, they don't know how to manage or look for funding to start yeah. up and to help them get further. And I think that's one of the failures I see in our community is where the the communication, I guess, or the or the fear around communicating what they actually want to do, isn't reaching um, the places or the the um, the schemes that they need to get hot, get in touch with. And, and it's, it's that, kind of, um, and that, and that one aspect is probably what sets Whangarei out from every other place. Because, hmm. you know, we've got council staff who will go out of their way to try and help you. We have hmm. created Northland, which will go out of their way to try and help you. Hmm. And if, you, if, if and all they do is sometimes team you up with somebody else, and that yeah. other person might get out of the skill, but they will team you up and make sure you're able to work together. And that's that doesn't get done anywhere else. Mm. This is Northland. Northland, we work together to get the project done because we all have a dream. We all have that that vision, that fire. And when one person gets the, the spark, they go, oh, yeah, I want to be part of that. And they jump on board as well. And they do what they can do. And you're right about that because, like, uh, I've, I've talked to, like, um, because I, I'm tied to an international company and so uh, out of America, and they're quite surprised at how we – are able to uh, work so fast, but not only that, but works to build so, you know, build and get funding, which, the, like, if in America, you're on your own, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, you, yeah you, 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 you got to do your own thing. You got to build everything on your own thing, on your own back. And, but here, like, in, I mean, like with Whangarei, you have so many people. And this is the thing about Whangarei it's a village, yeah. and it's always been a village. And it's been it's, um, it's been growing as a creative village, and that's a great thing about Whangarei, which is why I think I love being in Whangarei, because the the community aspects and the village aspect hasn't been lost because we're not so big that you know you you can walk down the street and someone will know you. Now you try that in Auckland, right? You can't have a conversation in Auckland because you won't you don't know which because everybody's so widespread, but because Whangarei is such a central area. You're able to meet someone that you already know from, you know, around. And I think not only that, but the but the many amazing work that happens in Whangarei, like groups like Volunteer Northland, 
uh, like the migrant center. I, I, I don't know what it's called, you know, uh, but, you know, all you've got all the, this, uh, the different ethnic groups that uh, have their own things that can happen. And we we're talking about that with Forum North offline about how it's not political, right? So for, for Forum North isn't got a political agenda about what they bring in, who they allow into, the, uh, into that building, and it's open to everybody and anyone. And I think... That's the beauty of Fungaray because I think um, whenever somebody tries to come in with some sort of uh, agenda, it's like, yeah, well, we're 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 a caring, open village, right? Yeah. You can't sort of like push us around into your own little way. And I think that's the beauty of having such a central, central unified. Uh, especially artistically, I think the arts growth of Fungra. You look at the quarry, right? It's well known everywhere because uh, it's it's been around for a long time. And you said you mentioned Rayburn House. Rayburn House has been there forever, and everybody knows that Rayburn House is in in Fungra. Um, you got Kiwi North Fungra Museum, as you mentioned, and now Hihiawa, right? Hihiawa is going to be putting on the map for what it does because there's so much uh, events that can happen because of how it's laid out. And I think that's a great thing there as well. And it's uh, and the fact is, it's surrounded by ocean. I mean, not ocean, by water. You know, yeah. and yeah. we were talking about earlier about how ships can come in, cruise cruise liners could come in, and I hadn't thought about that aspect of it. You know, how uh, the the idea that people just don't travel always just travel by by air and by land. There's a sea, and yep. you know that. That aspect because my mum, my mum uh, used to work for the yachting club in um. Opua. And, you know, and because I was there, you, you have all these different um, yachties from, uh, they were on their way to Tahiti, on their way to Fiji, from yep. America, from Britain. So maybe you're right. I mean, maybe I haven't thought about the, how the, that having the Hunda Baza at the waterfront there and plus all those other um, buildings could maybe have that whole aspect with by sea, you know, by yep. land, by air, by sea now. And I think, uh, Maybe the next thing we need to prop up is a railway, right? So you could have the ra uh, you know you have uh, you can basically get uh, people from Auckland traveling up by rail. A two you know? hour rail a two hour rail trip, I'd take it any day to come yeah. from Auckland to Fungaray in a heartbeat. It will look beautiful, you know, because yeah. all you're seeing is native, you know, and it's like the West Coast. I always wanted to go, never been on it. Oh, and but like we we that's something we haven't really looked at on how because like you look at Opal with Kawaka right with their railway thing that's a that's a big plus for them and maybe you know that's you know if, we, if we're going to go by sea then maybe by rail is the next thing for the council to look at maybe doing a uh, a an artist you know once a month artist trip from Auckland all the way to uh, uh, Opal right. Because you could see all, the, you could jump off, say like it's a two-hour trip. So you got like a say, a, an all-day, eight-hour day thing where you could j hang out in Fungaray, go to see your all your stuff, eat, you know, see your event, go up to Northland, and then on the way back. And that because you know not everybody likes. To, I mean, I don't like to travel by by road anyway because of my health too much. But um, a nice cozy railway cart, yeah, you know. And, and these are things I think um, that, that would be so inviting for tourists as well because of the green greenery and the great, great scenery of Northland that we have. It's like nowhere else. Yep, and I think, right. um, like you said, there's like half an hour to a beach, you know, and we have some of the great, um, be most beautiful beaches in, in the world, I think. Uh, Whale Bay for me is, is probably – probably the best ever beach in the world. I mean, I'm sure there's Indonesia, they got all their, you know, Bali and all that, they have their beaches, but our beach, you know, beaches are beautiful as well. And so, uh, is there anything um, more you'd like to discuss as a counselor? And then I'll give you the last words because we say we're going to do one hour. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah I know sometimes the time is just kind of there. Look, from, from my side of things, as a counselor, I'm just here to help and facilitate people. That's my job. Yes, it's a lot of policies and a lot of procedures and getting things in place. But as a, as a council, we only have one employee, and that is the CE. He yeah. employs all the other staff underneath him. And for us to go forward, we need creative people. We need practical people. We need 
uh, people who, who have visionary people who are uh, technology savvy. We need all of those people because without them, we won't have a community. And as the community is changing, these things need to happen. Like, uh, I know I get told from time to time, oh, we've, you know, Northland, what's what's good for Northland? Well, I'll tell you one great thing about Whangarei. Now, this is one thing that no other city in New Zealand has, and that is anyone over 70 gets free parking in Whangarei. So that's that's one thing that we can definitely take our hat off to Whangarei and, and we don't have to worry about. So if you come over 70, not a problem. But apart from that, Whangarei is an amazing place. It's a place I've grown up. I love it. It's It's got so much going for it from a, just a community aspect. And I just love the people that we've got around us. Yeah, you get the old rat bag, but that's normal. You get that everywhere. Whangarei as a, as a self is a place that looks after its people. Um, and when you've got a creative idea, we'll back you to make sure it happens. And that's why we have such amazing events happening in Whangarei. Welcome to anyone to come and join. He's disappeared. Right, no, he's so back our, I, no, no. So that was that was great. That was your last words. So what I was thinking, uh, I just remembered who it was when I was talking about uh, Afi World with the technology. It's Maggie Buxton. Yes, Maggie. Maggie Buxton. Yes. And so, uh, yeah. So Creative Northland, uh, Creative Tech Northland, and I think, yeah, I think, um, you know, how we're talking about that idea about maybe um, having a uh, text, you know like markers, you know, technology markers around uh, software app, whatever it is, around from right to lead Be people to projects. Go. Yeah. So um, <laughs> that's something, you know, that's something maybe the council can look at technology-wise and also with, like, putting, a, you know, Kiwi stamps to get to Kiwi House. But if, if Kiwi House is too far away, but I mean, like, you know, around Fungaray, the central hub of art stuff. So thank you so much, Vince, and I really appreciate you ch coming on board. I mean, we tried to do this a couple of weeks ago, but um, yeah, I think we we covered a lot of stuff which I didn't think about because I I I never um, I never prepare myself for questions because I know that <laughs> uh, because I know my my guest knows more about what um, what about what they're going to speak about than I do, right? And I think that's. Um, We've, we've covered stuff that I didn't even think about tonight, and I think it's just so cool that um, you've been able to join us and talk about, you know, how, what, I guess a lot of people would want to know where, where are we heading with all this stuff, why, you know, why are the buildings and changes happening and what events for the future and stuff. So thank you so much, and um, thank you for joining me. So everyone, wherever you are in the world, be safe, stay safe, and kakite ano, see you next time on wherever you're watching us from on this channel. Catch ya. Ciao.